So I had just one of those pregnancy poor sleep nights and I was up at five o'clock this morning. And I don't know why when I'm pregnant that a McDonald's breakfast sandwich sounds so good. <laughs> so I left the house early this morning to get my sausage McMuffin and iced coffee. And I was sitting there in the parking lot and all of the school buses started pulling out and starting their day. And it just was instant for me. I just started praying for our kids and our students and our schools and the next generation. And I was thinking about it because I actually feel a lot of hope for the next generation. There is so much up against them with social media and social issues, but I don't know, something in me feels extremely hopeful. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, well, maybe it's because my kids are still little. My oldest is five and I haven't been confronted with a lot of these difficulties and these very difficult dynamics that our kids are experiencing in school. And then I was thinking, or maybe it's because I know how powerful our prayers are. In fact, there's a book I love called Praying Like Monks, Living Like Fools. And in the opening chapter, the author shares the story of being a middle school student. And every morning during the summer before his you know, seventh or eighth grade year in school, he went to the school, he had a student directory, he would walk around the school and pray for each student by name. And what happened was he started a Bible study before school uh, one morning a week. And it started out with just a handful of students. And then he kept praying and more came. And by the end of the school year, half of his class was attending the Bible study and had received salvation. One student praying every single day. And so I do know how powerful our prayers are. But when we talk about prayer, which we've actually been talking a lot about this year, I could link to a few of those videos below. There's a lot that we feel up against. Some of us don't feel like we know how to pray. We don't have the words or we don't have the faith. And so I came across this book that I'm so excited to share with you. Praying the Scriptures Journal, but trusting God with your children. And even if your children have children, <laughs> <laughs> this is so important no matter what age your kids are or your nieces and nephews, even if they aren't your direct children or your grandchildren. This is loaded with prayers that are grounded in scripture, scripture and in proven prayer principles. And so you can actually know where to start and you can even know what to say. Because look at this, I marked a few pages for us. Okay. One of the first pages is for praying for salvation. And it literally gives you the line where you can put your child or grandchild's name and say, may my child confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that you raised Jesus from the dead so that they will be saved. And this is from Romans 10, 9. So you just prayed for your child or grandchild by name or neighbor or niece or nephew. And you prayed in accordance with scripture. Or here's the next one. Shine your light in my child's heart to give the light of the knowledge of your glory displayed in the face of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Or open my child's eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those sanctified by faith in Christ. And that's Acts 26, 18. I find when I'm praying in accordance with the scriptures, it really increases my faith. I feel so much more powerful in my prayers. And what I would encourage you, if you choose to get a journal like this, or I can link to a few principles as well, so you don't even have to buy this. But if you buy this book, I would encourage you, rip these pages out. Does that feel heretical? Is that hard to do? I know it is. But put it in your car. Put it in your planner. Hang it on the fridge. Hang it on your bathroom mirror so that it's in front of you. Because what will happen if we pray this over and over a few times, we'll start to commit it to memory. So that then when you're sitting in McDonald's eating your, your unhealthy breakfast, that, that you'll, these prayers will just pop into your mind. You know, Or when you're driving by a school. I love to pray when I drive by schools or crosswalks or soccer fields. And these prayers will actually be in your mind and something that you can kind of readily draw from. Okay, you ready for another one? I marked more pages. Okay, after salvation, it talks about the next generation and our kids having a love of God's word. Oh, 
There is so much distracting us, competing for our attention. Our kids are growing up with phones in their hands and they are, what do we call them, digital natives. <laughs> and so for them to have a love for God's word and to be grounded in his truth. And so here's prompts for prayer. Look at there's little bullet points that you can pray that your child would become aware of their spiritual need that they would have an openness to the Holy Spirit as their helper, that they would have friends and mentors who will point them toward Jesus, that they will have a strong biblical teaching and a heart to embrace it, that they will have a vibrant church community who will make our child, our children feel welcome. They will delight in being shaped and taught by God's word. Mm. Isn't that just everything you could hope for. That's when I pray for my kids. I pray that they will be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit because I just feel like if you have that, you can't go wrong. <laughs> like if you are listening to the Holy Spirit, oh, and quick to obey, sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and quick to obey. Because if you have that, you literally can't go wrong. And then, I mean, be grounded in God's word and have good friends. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Another topic that they talk about is kindness and compassion. And I love this quote in here. It says, one of my favorite prayers comes from Ezekiel eleven nineteen. God tells the Israelites he will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them and remove from their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. God does not change. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. What he did for the Israelites, he can do for our children, turning hardened hearts of stone into compassionate hearts of flesh. Sometimes we can feel like our kids are really hard to reach. We can feel like there's a wall between us and them. Uh, we just don't know how to relate. And so praying this from Ezekiel and then, you know, there's room here to journal and, you know, write down your child's name, write down the wishes that you have for them. But I also love there's a place here too where you can write down uh, what you see as your child's giftings or callings. Like what are the things that the Lord uniquely put in them? And there's a place where you can write that down and pray that over them as well. Okay. Cool resource. Again, I really do encourage you. Okay. If you can't rip pages out of a book, if you're like, I just spent money on that and, and it's actually really beautiful. You could always take a picture of them on your phone and then save those photos to your favorites. Um, and then when your iCloud fills up, like mine just did, you know, you kind of have to work through that, <laughs> uh, but keep those photos as a priority, um, just as something then that you can always flip back to. Maybe if you're, you know, waiting for your coffee or at a, an appointment, you can always flip back through, or you're waiting in line to pick up your kids. What a perfect time to flip through those saved photos in your phone and be saying these prayers as well. Another story that is really similar to the one that I started out with is I actually have good friends who lived in what they thought was a pretty good neighborhood, but they started noticing uh, different crime patterns. In fact, the police shared with them a map of the entire city that they lived in and showed the different neighborhoods that were being targeted for crime. And their neighborhood was one of them. It was really unexpected. But what the mom decided to do was she started walking around her neighborhood. She had that map. She looked at the perimeter of where the crime had increased. And every night she would walk around and she would just declare the Lord's blessing, his protection, uh, ministering angels. And the next time they printed that map, six months later, they were then in a low crime area. They were no longer highlighted on the map of their city. Our prayers are so powerful. And again, if you don't have the words, I have a free printable I'll link to, or I have words for you here. Also, I had talked about in the past moms in prayer, which I know if you have work commitments, maybe that can be a little bit difficult. Um, but having community around prayer can be so important as well. Or a friend of mine was sharing her and her good friend. They just get on the phone every morning and pray for 15 minutes. That's it. The, and like if they have time to chit chat at the end they do but they've just taken a devotional book like this and they're just working methodically through it they hop on the prayer or they hop on the call they pray and then they hop off but she was just sharing how her faith has increased so much 
and her hopefulness toward the future. You know, again, it can be really easy to become despondent about our kids, about, you know, where they are right now, especially if they are making poor decisions or things that seem harmful to them. It can be so hard to stay in hope and to stay in faith. And so again, that's where I've found that praying the scriptures is super powerful. Um, and then of course, if we can join our faith with others, it always seems to kind of buoy us and help us to feel more hopeful as well. And please share your testimonies of praying for your kids, of wayward children, of any answers to prayer, big or small, that you've seen, especially in regards to the next generation, or even ways that you pray for your children in the comments. It'll be a great encouragement to all of us. And then, okay, if we can turn a corner here and have a little fun, I saw that my Trades of Hope box is here. I want to show you a few beautiful items for Christmas. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see them and hold them and touch them. So we're going to unbox that together. Aren't these hydrangeas amazing? And my Trades of Hope box is here. And so I have three things to show you. Of course, everything from Trades of Hope is handmade by artisans around the world who are working in good conditions and getting a fair wage and helping their families rise out of poverty. And every item shares the story of the woman who made it. And so it's such a beautiful gift to give as well because it's meaningful and beautiful. Okay, so these are actually Christmas decorations. If you kind of want to get a head start either for yourself or for gift giving, you know, spread out the budget a little bit. These items are so beautiful. Of course, we have beautiful jewelry at Trades of Hope, but also uh, really, really pretty home decor as well. That's all handmade. This is the one I'm so excited about. So these are hand carved by Nikat. Nikat gingerbread houses and what's so fun is they are painted on both sides so they could be used on a mantle or in like a centerpiece just beautiful and after that these bells we had these mandala bells last year they were bigger so now this year we have a set of seven that are smaller and I just think this is such a great like these will be so beautiful on a wreath like hanging on the door or you could divide them up and give them as little separate gifts. Again, telling everybody that they are handmade in India and helping out a really great cause. And then lastly from Nepal, we have, oh my goodness, this cute nativity set. Look at how precious these are and such a cute way to share your faith at Christmas and again, support women who are rising out of poverty in Nepal as they handmade out of wool this little nativity scene. And so you could put that again in a display on a mantle. Um, you know, kids could play with them and not hurt them. And so I thought these were so beautiful as well. So I'll link to Trades of Hope. Um, again, if you just wanna get a little start on your holiday decor or gift giving, it might be a good uh, thing to check out. So. All right, baby comes in a few weeks. I am so ready. I'm having lots of contractions. The kids are, you know, just kind of a little uh, out of sorts already. And so we're trying to keep our routines, keep things normal. So I covet your prayers uh, for a healthy baby boy and for us to transition to a family of six. And I for sure will keep you posted. And so Father, we just thank you. Thank you so much for this time together. And Lord, we thank you for the next generation. We thank you for how gifted they are, how resourceful they are, how intelligent they are, and for all of the gifts that you have placed within them, for the divine callings that you have on their lives, Lord. And so we speak blessings over our children and grandchildren. Lord, we declare your truth. We declare your light and your salvation. Lord, we invite them into the family and kingdom of God. And so Father, we pray that you would be with each one help their identity to be secure in you, that they would know who they are and what you've called them to. Lord God, and help us as parents, as teachers, as aunts, Lord, help us to lead and guide and shape the next generation. Help us to demonstrate an authentic relationship with you. Help us to live out godly values. Lord, help us to express our faith when the opportunity comes. Give us the words, Lord, to gently invite and demonstrate and share your love and your goodness and your salvation. So Lord, I thank you for these resources. I thank you for stories of answered prayers, Lord. Lord, I pray that each one of us would grow in faith, 
we would grow in boldness and we would grow in our love and care for all of those who are younger than us and older than us, Lord, and that your salvation, again, would sweep across this next generation. And so I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.